Greetings Pilgrims, I'm Doug. This is Camino 2020, a section of my channel devoted to preparing for the Camino de Santiago. And today I am making a rather ridiculous comparison between two backpacks. The Z-Pax Arc Blast 55 and the Osprey Atmos 50. Why in the world would I be comparing two packs that are so different? We'll find out in about 10 seconds. In many ways, the Osprey Atmos 50 and the Z-Pax Arc Blast 55 could not be more different. The Z-Pax is an ultralight bag, weighing in at about 20 ounces, has only three pockets, a very minimal harness system, and is basically waterproof. The Osprey Atmos, however, is full of pockets. It has about seven, depending on how you count. Oh, and I forgot, it also has hip belt pockets. It's got a lid with two pockets in it. It's got a front stuff pocket made of mesh, two mesh side pockets for water bottles, tents, poles, that sort of thing, an under pocket that is divided from the main pack by a removable flap, and you can put sleeping bags or something like that in here. Up at the top in the lid, you've got two pockets, one on the top, one on the bottom. On the interior of the bag, you have another pocket for a hydration bladder. The Z-Pax comes with four little compression cords. The Atmos has no less than nine very big straps. The Z-Pax Arc Blast does have a stretch mesh panel over the back that keeps the pack off of your back, as does the anti-gravity suspension system of the Osprey. Both packs have an adjustable harness. Both packs have a hip belt, straps, sternum strap, load lifters, and padding on both. The Osprey has padding as well, although it is about three times as thick. The Osprey Atmos weighs in at about 67 ounces. It is more than three times heavier than the Z-Pax Arc Blast, and yet they are rated for nearly the same volume. Now the Arc Blast is obviously quite a bit smaller. Its main compartment is about 42 liters and you get about another 13 with all of the pockets on the outside. The Osprey Atmos is basically all interior. And finally, the Osprey Atmos typically runs about $240 retail. The Z-Pax Arc Blast runs $325 with no modifications. Now, why am I telling you all this? The reason is that when it comes to backpacks, you're always having to kind of balance quality features, cost, and weight. And generally speaking, you only get to pick two of those. So for example, with the Z-Pax Arc Blast, obviously you're trading the cost, which is fairly high for a backpack, for the good quality features and the weight. With the Osprey Atmos, you're not paying nearly as much for good features and quality, but you are losing in the weight department. Now, weight is always a big consideration with backpacks. And if you have kind of gotten sucked into the ultralight mindset for the Camino, you may be making some bad choices. And I just want to explain how that can happen. Both of these packs are really at the top of their game in their category. Z-Pax is all about ultra light. Osprey is all about providing extremely good standard features. So for example, in the Atmos line, you have pretty much the greatest harness system that's ever been invented for a backpack. It's called anti-gravity and the pack literally floats above your hips. It's amazing, but it weighs a lot. So what is worse, having a heavy pack that is incredibly comfortable and rides really well, or having a less comfortable pack that doesn't hardly weigh anything? This is where you've got to be careful not to get sucked into the ultralight mindset with only one item. Ultralight backpacking, like all backpacking, is a complete system. And you can't just tweak one part of it and expect everything to work. And the backpack is one of the most important parts of the kit because it's what's going to be carrying everything else you have. I, for example, have pretty, I would say, mid-weight backpacking gear. It's not cheap Walmart car camping stuff, but it's also not super ultra light. Now, if I were to try to go backpacking with the Arc Blast, 
with the current hiking equipment that I have, it would be a disaster. Number one, my stuff wouldn't fit. My sleeping bag does not compress down to the size of a tennis ball like some of these things do. I have a pretty large tent right now. It's kind of heavy, it's kind of big. I have a big stove, not one of those little pocket rockets. I could spend three or four hundred dollars on the greatest lightweight backpack that has ever been invented and have an absolutely miserable hike because I'm putting equipment in it that it's not meant to carry. You don't want to be maxing out an ultralight bag because a lot of the way that companies that make ultralight equipment cut down on the weight is by getting rid of comfort features. You're not gonna find pads this thick or webbing this all-encompassing on an ultralight pack because then it just wouldn't be ultralight anymore. But the point is, if you have ultralight gear, if you've really got your backpacking kit dialed in and you're approaching single digits on your base weight, well, putting 10 or 11 pounds in something that only weighs 20 ounces isn't gonna change that much. The whole system is gonna be comfortable because it's so light. But this backpack is not going to compensate for a heavier, bulkier load because it's not meant to. Now, although the Atmos does weigh more, I mean three pounds more <laughs> than the Z-Packs, the extra padding and the amazing trampoline mesh and the way the hip belt is shaped and everything else, it is meant to carry additional weight, including the three pounds of itself that you are adding to something like an ultralight pack. So as it turns out, my standard mid-weight backpacking gear is going to be carried a lot better in a really good mid-weight backpack. Rather than going for ultra low weight, they're going for ultra carrying capacity and comfort. So if I'm carrying 20 or 30 pounds of backpacking gear, three pounds is only about 10, 15% difference. Whereas if I'm only carrying 10 pounds of gear, three pounds is 30% of my system. And that's why when you get down to that ultralight base weight, something like the Z-Pax Arc Blast is fantastic. But if the backpack is the only thing you change in your kit, you could actually be shooting yourself in the foot. Interestingly enough, if you don't have enough weight, the Osprey Atmos may not be a good bag for you. And that's not just because you're adding an incommensurate amount of weight to what should be a very low base weight. It's because the pack itself is designed to be weighed down. In other words, it's supposed to fit well when you have weight in it. So if you don't put enough stuff in something like the Atmos, it's not gonna ride the way it's supposed to. So what is the basic point of all this? If you're gonna go standard backpacking mid-weight gear, go with a really good standard mid-weight backpack. If you're gonna go ultralight with your gear, then you can make the switch to an ultralight backpack. But it's probably not wise to make that switch until your gear necessitates it. I hope this has been a helpful video to you. If it has, would you give the video a like and consider subscribing to the channel if you're into Camino hiking and gear stuff. When you click on subscribe, hit that bell notification if you want to be alerted when future videos drop. And until then, I'm Doug, this is Camino 2020, Buen Camino.